if you could give an overview of the data, data ecosystem as you see it, and what is it about Carbon Arc that gives you an opportunity and uh, the solution that gives your customers uh, an advantage and help in this uh, new model of yours? Thanks for the, uh, the, the question. Um, my name is Kirk McEwen. Um, for background, uh, I spent 20 years on the buy side uh, in investment management. Uh, and I worked mostly at three firms, uh, Tudor Investments, Glenview Capital, and uh, I joined SAC in 2012, which became Point72. Um, and I built research systems at those shops. Uh, so my last role at Point72, I, I had built and run market intelligence, um, which was the proprietary research business for the firm. Um, sitting in that seat, uh, I was a big buyer of alternative data, um, you know, sort of was, was buying uh, millions and millions of dollars worth of data on an annualized basis. Um, so it, was, it, was, it had a balance sheet uh, at a time when, looking back to 12 years ago, when credit card data was first proliferating on the street, uh, and it, you know, sort of was, was, was in the mix buying that data, um, which was a great seat. Um, but what became very clear uh, in sitting in that seat was that, well, we had balance sheet to buy, uh, a lot of firms and certainly the companies we were investing in didn't necessarily have the same balance sheet. Supply and demand are really far apart in the data ecosystem and that's sort of the, the fundamental sort of first principle that I would lay out in thinking about the data ecosystem is that data is bought and sold as a capex, uh, you know, sort of element, not as an opex, right? And so you need a, a, you know, a, a fair amount of capital uh, to deploy against uh, the purchase of a data set and or a portfolio of data sets. Um, once you do that, um, you need to bring it into your house, uh, transform structure, and then you know sort of uh, you know sort of evolve into use case development and KPIs uh, that requires engineers and scientists. Um, it's easier to buy a house or a car in the United States than it is to buy a data set, and then you don't need an engineer to drive your car, right? So um, you know fundamentally, um, you've already taken the total addressable market on the consumer side to you know, 500 or so buyers uh, above $2 million in the United States. Um, so you've got a really sort of balkanized end-to-end -end for supply and demand um, around data. And so for all the data that exists in the world, very little of it actually makes it into the hands of the decision makers. Um, and so uh, I left uh, Point72 at the end of 2020 and started Carbon Arc with the idea that supply and demand were too far apart the ability to pay and willingness to pay for data were the biggest drivers of data liquidity. And if you could embed and engage use case development further back into the process and deliver actionable insight uh, to customers at scale and have them pay for what they consume, you actually can transform how data gets bought and sold in the world, right? And so started building that in 21 and um, it's a build, and it's, 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 it's certainly a very difficult sort of category enhancement that we're trying to do. But the Gen AI moment has been sort of a really interesting flashpoint um, that's sort of brought to light a lot of the problems in the data market. Um, they were largely sort of um, uh, in place and known because of, uh, you know, sort of uh, the financial services firms could see the problem, but a lot of other people couldn't. So let's talk about what, what expectations are going forward. So Kirk, I, I don't know if you want to talk about the future uh, of this business, KPIs, ML, AI, but you know, maybe you could elaborate a little further on how you're combining data sets, how that's useful to your customer base, because not everybody can do that. And I know you've uh, you know, taken a big effort to do that. Yeah, so um, we're building Carbon Arc with an eye on history. Um, I, you know, one of the best things about being a research guy is that if you look at the past, eventually it repeats, and that's how you get to figure out what's going to happen in the future. And so we're doing the same thing with Carbon Arc, which is if you look back to like the 1930s in the United States, uh, there were 13 exchanges or so uh, where you could go to, go to the market, you could buy stock with a wheelbarrow and a bag of cash, and you were a market operator, um, and you could arbitrage between New York and Boston and Atlanta and Chicago and San Francisco. And um, over time, those 13 exchanges became one exchange or a few exchanges. And you know, sort of the market evolution, you know, data trades like equities in the 1930s right now, right? Um, and so the way we're approaching the problem is, 
the idea that um, at the end of the day, just like on Wall Street, you still have to trade a stock. No matter what KPI you have, all the decisions you have to make, you still have to, tr you have to, you still have to make a decision. In the same vein, we think the data needs to inform one of three things, whether you're a decision maker uh, at, a, at a corporate or on Wall Street. It has to create new opportunities beyond the opportunities you have. It has to create a higher hit rate on said opportunities, which is lift. Or you have to be able to make bigger bets. If you're not doing one of those three things with data, you don't have a data business, period, full stop, right? So fundamentally, um, you know, on Wall Street, you know, sort of improving hit rate, especially at some of the faster trading firms, um, you know, anything sort of T30 to 60 day holding periods, trading the book nine to 12 times a year, you improve the hit rate by 200 basis points, you're world class, right? It's, it, the difference between good and great is 200 basis points. And so that is sort of the fundamental frame that we're trying to sort of engage around, which is like, how do you create an ecosystem for data that improves your hit rate at a price that provides a positive ROI? And so we bring in all this data, we structure it around companies, brands, people, and locations. We stitch dozens and dozens of data sets together and create the structure so that there's a crosswalk between all of the data in our stack around you know, sort of this framework that allows for you to marry everything that's going on in a zip code or everything that's going on around a brand. And then we deliver those inputs to our customers who can storyboard all of those problems on a real-time basis. And we do that to allow for better decision-making. Um, you know, sort of where the puck goes, where I think the world goes, is that you start factoring actors. You like the bar of factor framework, which was so good for stocks. If you have enough data, you can factor Taylor Swift. She's got momentum, persistence, and resonance in every zip code in the United States. And then you tie it back to McDonald's and see if that is actually a fundamental sort of relationship that resonates. If you have enough data, you can factor anything. Um, in that vein, I think that's this type of stuff that actually powers models in the future not sort of these reams and reams and reams and petabytes of data that everybody's talking about. Did you, did you want to talk about your pricing model? Because you, you, in terms of usage and the flexibility that gives buyers? Yeah, so, you know, sort of we're, 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 we're taking it to the wall. Um, it'll either be, the, you know, the, the, the best decision of my career or the worst. But, um, uh, you know, we are selling uh, these inputs uh, on a consumption frame. Um, so you can go into our stack and you can buy receipt data, uh, you know, sort of in Boston, Huggies versus Pampers 2018 to 2024, tie it back to advertising efficacy in that market, and it'll cost you eight bucks, right? Um, that's, you know, sort of uh, embedded in that price is storage compute and the underlying cost of the data on the left side of the ledger, and we're doing consumption rate deals with data providers. And so if we can achieve a density and velocity of scale, we're selling structured products. At the end of the day, a, a data a prediction has time decay, volatility, and a cash flow associated with it, which are the fundamental inputs of pricing an option. So basically, if you think about it, we are trying to imp, you know, sort of uh, augment and enrich a financial system inside of a data framework. It's fascinating because so many funds can be priced out with very expensive data sets. So. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out because you're allowing people to per potentially participate where they couldn't participate before.